Do you hate videos where people ramble on about nothing before getting to the point? So do I. So make sure you check the chapters if you just want to get to the bit that you want. In this video, getting up and running with Canbus. So Canbus is a protocol that lets mach machines talk to each other. So it could be an industrial machine or, important to us, a car. So your car's full of little modules. Could be in your entertainment unit. Could be in the door. Could be in the boot. Could be anywhere. And the ECU wants to talk to each of those items to know where they're at. And that protocol that I use is called CAN bus, and it's only two wires running between each unit. If you had to run an individual wire between every unit in the car, your car would be half copper, right? So breaking it down into this communication protocol makes it easier to communicate across all these machines, lightweight and reliable. CAN bus came out in the 2000s, so any modern car should have a CAN bus protocol systems in it so this video should cover anything sort of in a modern car so that's why we'd be interested in getting canvas up and running because we go down to the records and get something like this and hook it up to our game and all the dials and everything will move in unison with what's happening in the game so if you're thinking of doing this don't do what jason did and get the cheapest dash you could find on your local classified site and hope it's going to work this is from a mazda 2 and there's not a lot of information about it so before you go and buy your dash, um, we do a bit of research online just to see if you can at least get a wiring diagram to get you started. You need a bit more, but um, for this, for me, I could find a wiring diagram but not much else. So I managed to get it talking, so that's what we're going to cover today. So you can at least get to the point of talking to your dash unit, and then that's at least half the battle won. You're not going to need anything more complicated than a multimeter to work out our connections today, so let's get on to it. So if you did make a random purchase of a dashboard, you'll get it like this. Uh, hopefully you've got the plug in it and I've just chopped it off at the loom and you can wire into those rather than trying to wire into a socket. It's a bit of a nightmare. But the first thing you need to do is find out how the power gets into it. Almost certainly, I'm not sure, but they'll have a regulator on it. So a voltage regulator is something which converts the voltage from a high voltage down to one that's going to work inside the unit because having 12 volt motors and LEDs and all these, those sorts of things doesn't make much sense so they convert it all down to 5 volts and this is the regulator for this one here it's in a big heat sink so for the regulator to work it's going to have an input voltage which is coming from the power source your battery and in the ground and if we can find out where they are then we can power the unit up and this one has got a regulator on it and the markings on it are quite clear. Took a photo of that or jotted that down. Went on the internet and searched it and told me which legs were for the power in, which will be coming from our power source and the ground. So once we've got the power source and the power to ground sorted, we can hook it up to a power supply. I can almost guarantee, although it makes sense, that those wires aren't red and black, as you would expect. There's a multitude of colours on here, uh, like red, white stripes, black or yellow stripes, all sorts of different colours, and they just whatever it is is random. There's no standard for it. Now for this one, I think it ended up being red and blue and black and white where the where the power wires. So the power obviously need 12 volts, so you can just get a wall power supply to do that. Or if you watched my last video or a couple of videos ago, I did a video on getting a car seat, an electric car seat out of a car to work. It can just use computer power supply so you'll recognize uh, this board this is just a breakout board makes makes life a lot easier it, you just plug your atx computer power directly into it and it breaks out all the different voltages onto one board so we won't have to fluff around with making a proper power supply or connectors for us to, to connect to so once i connect this up to here we should start seeing lights and things come on so we're all hooked up so we'll just flick the switch and see if anything happens So the dials did the sweeping motion just to say they're sort of um, up and running but there's no dash lights and what I found with this unit is uh, that powers the unit up so it's working but it needs an ignition signal so the ignition is turned on for everything else to power on and I just like I say I just managed to find a wiring diagram for that to show me where that was. Once I hook up our um, ignition wire to say the car's turned on we should see all our other lights turn on. And then we go, so we've got the airbag, handbrake battery, check engine, maybe it's and all those things have lit up. So it, it's alive now. So the next thing you need to do is try and figure out how to get some CAN bus signals out of the unit. So to find our CAN bus lines, we need to learn a little bit about CAN bus. 
So CAN bus works at around two and a half volts and has two signals as we mentioned before. We've got a one of those is called CAN bus high and one of those is called CAN bus low. CAN bus high will, will go drive up to three volts and CAN bus low will go down about two volts. And it's swinging between those two voltages between two and a half and three, two and a half and two to send the signals between the ECU and our device. What can happen is that the signal when it's not connected to anything the signal sort of freaks out and continuously sends out a signal around about 3 volts on CAN bus high and around about 2 volts on CAN bus low. If you want to look onto a scope it'll look a little bit like this. I don't have a scope to find that and most of you don't either so we're just going to take advantage of that freaking out of the CAN bus to measure the voltages on each of these wires to find one which is around 3 volts and one that's around 2 volts. We know the 3 volt line is going to be CAN bus high and we know the 2 volt or around about 2 volt wire is going to be CAN bus low. So this is what it looks like on the multimeter. So we've gone through all the wires here and we've established that these two wires here, a red one and a white one, <coughs> have got different signals to the others. The other one some might be some like 12 volts, some might be ground, just weird voltages. But if we measure this one, uh, the white one, see the voltage is 3 volts. And the red one is going to be 2 volts or around 2 points, volts, 1.8. So we're going to establish that this one is going to be CAN bus high and this one's going to be CAN bus low. So we've got voltage going to the unit, we know it works. We know the CAN bus is working because we're getting voltage out. Now we have to look it up to our computer to see if we get any data. So once we've got our CAN bus high and CAN bus low wires sorted out, we need to connect it somehow to our computer to start talking. And you can't just plug it directly into our Arduino, which is what we're going to use to communicate because the frequencies on the CAN bus are quite precise and it needs perfect timing so you get these little modules. It's called an MCP2515 and they're, they're very cheap and they're easily available and what we need to do is just connect that to as a go between our Arduino and our uh, CAN bus network. So you'll notice on one end of that module it's got a H and an L so that's for a CAN bus high and a CAN bus low and the rest is an SPI connection to our Arduino. So on our Arduino there's libraries pre-built to communicate across the, the network to the CAN bus but uh, there's a lot of fiddling involved but there is one particular one which I found which does sort of everything you need to get to this point to start testing and it's called CAN Commander, it'll be in the show notes by uh, Matthew Kukinich and what he's got there is he's got a, a sketch which you download into your Arduino and uh, it's got like a menu of options you can go through so it's all kind of already done for you so you can start testing straight away well, for my one I had to change a couple of bits of the code just slightly down on the page there's a frequency setting and his one says 16 or had 16 in it and if you look at your adapter it has a frequency written on the little metal can there and you just want to match that up to yours otherwise this software won't work and next to that I didn't have to change it on mine but there's a frequency for the communication across the CAN bus. There's a couple of frequencies that it uses 500 and 125 I think. 500 is for the also the engine related important stuff and 125 is for sort of talking with your car stereo or lower level communications. So I left it on 500 because obviously I want to talk with the, with the engine and this um, dashboard. Any other thing maybe is a bit further up there's a chip select pin need to set uh, has set is set to nine but it could be anything you've got on your Arduino you're using. Now you're thinking, well I'll go and get my ESP32 or my Pi Pico and hook it up. No you won't because this board, uh, interface board works at five volts and ESP32s and Pi Picos all have IO of 3.3 volts. So I've just saved you like six hours of research. And if you want to use those boards on this module you need a, a, a something called a level converter and it converts all your 3.3 voltages up to 5 and vice versa uh, so I've just gone for Arduino uh, Uno because it's 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 already running at 5 volts and I had one kicking around and just you know, sort of worked straight away. So once you get the firmware flashed and you go into the uh, console of Arduino you get presented with this menu and the only two items I'm really interested in working with here is can read all traffic and can write now um, what this will do is it'll connect to your CAN bus and just read all the traffic so if we hit number one and it starts uh, spewing out data 
when our, our canvas is up and running success uh, all you need to do to read the canvas is definitely functioning if you've got nothing here check the wiring from the NCP2515 back to your Arduino uh, check your wiring on your dashboard power all those sorts of things but for me as you can see it's spewing out this code which is uh, canvas language and it's it's kind of successful and, and, and it works so technically if I can read I should be able to write to it as well and then if I knew the codes to send to my device I could pump these in with can write and send them down to the, and make things work but this is where I hit a brick wall because I don't have the database uh, codes for this particular um, dashboard. So where do I get those codes from? Well I can't get them from anywhere unless I search them on the internet so if you have a dash in mind and you want to use search on the internet for Canvas DBC it's it's a specific database for Canvases and someone's gone and reverse engineered all the codes for that car and they're available and you're, you're good to go you can just pump those codes in and everything will start working. Of course for this uh, Orphan Master 2 there's nothing available that I can find. I can, I'm probably just going to have to either abandon this one and get one that I know does work. Now I've found out there's DVCs available. Or um, the other thing we can do or you could do is drive, connect your um, canvas module up to an actual car. I'm as the two, I don't have one. And just go for a drive and capture all the codes. And as the, all the codes come in, you can try and work out which one does what. Because obviously if the codes, are, if you rev out the motor, there'll be one code which is for uh, the rev counter and it'll be going up and down and you better play that back into your device and make it move on the dashboard that I've got but I don't have a master 2 demo I don't I don't have any intention of getting one so it's probably all done and dusted for me for this control panel for this dashboard so I might just have to uh, abandon it or just find some way to try and hack it through or find a similar car and see if the codes match but at the moment I'm not having too much luck but for a really quick breakdown on, on how it works uh, this is a message coming from out of my dash at the moment it's got an ID at the beginning and that ID is within one device in my car is listening for that I one ID and if it sees that ID it says oh I know what that is I know what to do with it and then it reads the other bits afterwards and each of those bits means something to the car so for my device or my dash if I activate the handbrake the last digit changes so it's telling whatever device this is at 430 or whatever it is uh, this has changed the probably just telling the ECU that um, the handbrake's off or whatever so that's about it I hope that gets you up and running on your CAN bus journey I'm by no means a CAN bus expert I've just spent a few days trying to get this going and this is the video I would have liked to have found before wasting days trying to get this thing kind of working if you made it this far you should totally subscribe aside from that thanks for watching